video, we're going to talk about active transport. My name is Matt Halter. It is the Corona Summer 2020. Active transport is utilized to move things, ions or molecules, against their concentration gradients. There are two forms of active transport. We have primary active transport and secondary active transport. Primary active transport utilizes chemical ener energy in the form of ATP. Secondary active transport ut utilizes kinetic energy. So the main form of primary active transport in our body is the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump is moving sodium and potassium against their gradients, moving three sodium outside of the cell and two potassium inside of the cell. There are three main roles of the sodium potassium pump. One is to maintain chemical gradients, another is to preserve electrical gradients, and a third is to regulate cell volume. It maintains chemical gradients by pushing sodium out and potassium in. Keep in mind that over the course of hours, days, weeks, sodium is constantly moving into cells to depolarize cells. Potassium is constantly leaving cells to repolarize cells. So we need to somehow get those ions back to where they belong so we have those gradients, so sodium and potassium can move when we need them. The second point here, the preservation of electrical gradients, is achieved by moving more positively charged ions out of the cell than into the cell. That is to say, we're moving three cations out and two cations in, and that will make the outside of the cell more positive and the other way of saying it, the interior of the cell more negative. It regulates cell volume by ensuring that there are not too many solutes inside of the cell. If there were too many solutes inside of the cell, water would flow into the cell via osmosis and the cell would begin to swell. The corollary is true as well. If there are more solutes outside of the cell, then the cell would begin to shrink because water would be leaving the cell. One factor I haven't talked about is the interior of the cell has a number of protein anions that contribute to the osmolarity of the cell. As a result, that's why we have to pump out more solutes out of the cell than into the cell, and that helps regulate cell volume. Now, secondary active transport utilizes kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is created by anything, any ion, any molecule, moving down its chemical gradients. In this example, we're looking at the sodium glucose transporter, which is just one of many forms of secondary active transport. It is util utilizing the kinetic energy created by sodium moving into the cell. Keep in mind, anytime something is moving down its gradient, it creates kinetic energy. And in the sodium glucose transporter, it's pulling glucose into the cell against its gradient. What we can see here is there's a super high concentration of glucose inside the cell. Full disclosure, this is not the case with all body cells, but certain cells like cells in the kidney, specifically of the nephron, have a high concentration of glucose. But Glucose needs to be pulled into those cells, and that's achieved by the kinetic energy of sodium, specifically of the sodium glucose transporter. This is what's known as a sim porter because it's moving glucose along with it in the same direction, but there are things known as antiporters, which utilize kinetic energy, but the entities are moving in opposite directions, and we'll take a look at those in subsequent videos. Couple of things I want to point out here. The sodium potassium pump is the exact same thing as the sodium potassium ATPase. Anytime we see the suffix ASE, that is suggesting it's an enzyme. And in this case, it's an enzyme that's going to break down ATP to liberate the energy. And in this case, it's going to use that energy to pump sodium and potassium against their gradients. One thing I do want to highlight, because we'll see this term, ATP synthase is not the same thing as ATPase. ATP synthase is a protein that produces ATP, 
or synthesizes ATP. It is not the same thing as an ATPase. Okay, as we continue to study this, I want you to think about one thing. Is chemical energy, that is ATP, required for secondary active transport? When you think of the whole scheme of things with cellular activity, can we have secondary active transport without ATP? That's it for now. Thank you very much.